from the World Airline Cycling Championship and the British Airways Cycling Team. Welcome to the GCN Show! Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we settled cycling's greatest debate once and for all. Peak up or peak down? It's peak down! 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 Yeah, we also have a new way to measure your bum for saddle fitting, a new Cannondale, and among other things, the defection of Tom Bonin and a bike packing race across New Zealand in cycling shorts. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Giro d'Italia champion Tom de Moulin isn't always missed the call. Not when he has his second mechanical problem in two days anyway. Oh, it's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Anyway, don't worry Tom, shit happens mate. Anyway, we also learned of a new winter hack. Yeah, or possibly bodge actually. Pro races were contending with such cold weather at the weekend in Belgium that some resorted to putting Vaseline on their faces in order to keep warm. That sounds a bit disgusting to be honest, but more of that later. Yeah, we'll leave that for later. Uh, now, the other week, Emma and I were in Milan at the Politecnico Milano wind tunnel. You've seen the results already from one of our scientific experiments. Uh, just to keep you in the loop, actually, the uh, scientific paper that we've written off the back of that is currently being peer reviewed. As we speak. I wouldn't get your hopes up there, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, while we were there, we did have time to squeeze in another very important test to answer one of cycling's oldest questions. Generally speaking, GCM presenters get on exceedingly well, but there is one issue, and it centres around these caps, roadie caps. Now, Matt feels that roadie caps should be worn with the peak down. I think that the cap should be worn with the peak facing up. Now this comes down to a sartorial choice, one based on aesthetics. But one thing that really peeves Matt off is me wearing an aerodynamic road helmet with my peak up. He feels that this is some kind of universal wrong. So we're going to put this one to the test. Politecnico Milano have kindly loaned us their wind tunnel. So in between testing for important things like whether or not suspension bridges will blow over in hurricanes, they have given us the time and the expertise to see once and for all which is more aerodynamic, peak up or peak down. Place your bets. Now, outside we have independent adjudicator Dr. Pooley overseeing the tests. She's independent because she actually thinks roadie caps look stupid full stop and therefore she's not gonna influence this result. So here we are, mid-test. Sai has his peak down. This is his starting position. You can see here, peak down. And over here, we can see his, the drag force he's exerting. It's 32 at the moment. We're just gonna get an average over two minutes for this position. Now we have Sai in position two. The peak is now raised. This is obviously Sai's preferred position. We have to trust him that he's keeping everything else about his position the same, including his elbow width, his head height. All these things make a big difference. Right, it's results time. This is Stefano, who's the test engineer here at the wind tunnel. Stefano, how are things looking? Peak up versus peak down. Wow. Well, here we got uh, our results. It seems that uh, you should pick up uh, your air. Uh, really? Your, uh, yeah. There it you seems go, it's faster. official. It's definitely faster. Yeah. But uh, do we really have to, to trust to this uh, 10 watt of difference? Well, I don't know. Maybe we, we should check uh, several times uh, if uh, you are really, really faster with uh, cap up or, uh, or no. The big problem in uh, this test is that uh, you are modifying a small detail like uh, the cap, but you should take care to keep the same position of all the body, way of pedaling and so on. We assume that is uh, the cap, but maybe is uh, something else like your arm and so on. So, we will go on with the post-process and checking all the movie 
and all the camera to see if this is really the cap or something else check that you weren't cheating yes well fair enough now uh yeah so but it could be that subconsciously having my peak up made me feel faster and more racy therefore i was actually significantly oh, faster so i'm gonna basically take that as being a victory for a peak up we probably don't need to check anything else uh so there you go matt it's official peak up is faster it's faster yeah <laughs> so in a nutshell those results are pretty inconclusive what no, they're not, Emma. Why would you say that? 10 watts is 10 watts. No, but seriously, this does illustrate quite neatly the difficulties of wind tunnel testing because even quite major changes in aerodynamics can be offset or distorted by the addition of a rider. And let's face it, a bike is not much use without a rider. And although we did track size position quite carefully, it's likely that some small change in body position caused the difference in 10 watts. All right. Fair enough. And jokes aside, uh, this doesn't mean that aerodynamic optimization is a myth, because it's not. It does make a significant difference. But it does also neatly illustrate the point that actually your body position is much more important, and by some margin as well. Yep, and actually I had my suspicions, even whilst we were testing in the wind tunnel, that this test might not have been quite right, because I think it may have been distorted by your huge grin when you had to peak <laughs> up, and your frown when you had peak down. You mean my big mouth ruined things again? No, no, so you just so. couldn't control your happiness with the peak up. <laughs> that would actually be quite an interesting wind tunnel test. Is a smile faster than a frown? Tell you what, imagine the results. They could literally change the face of cycling. Imagine those time trialists just grinning away as they pedal. No, I, I can't actually imagine a time trialist grinning if I'm completely honest, am I? No. No. But anyway, back to the matter of hats. I have to confess that until a couple of years ago, I would not wear a cycling cap because I thought it looked ridiculous. What? I know, sorry, don't judge me on my earlier opinions. I think it's because baseball caps, oh, they're just horrible. They make me look so stupid. Thanks, so. <sighs> Oh yeah, see what you mean. Yeah, exactly. Now that I've realised though, how useful a cycling cap is, I'm totally happy to wear them. Yeah. You know, they, they keep the rain out of my eyes when it's raining, keep the rain out of my spectacles so they don't get all misted up. They're fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so I don't care how ridiculous I look. But they don't look ridiculous, Emma, they look cool. Everyone knows but that. I'll give it to you that some people can carry off a cycling cap very well. I look ridiculous, but I don't care. And the only thing I have to watch out for though is that my ponytail pushes the cap further forward. So I can't actually ride peak down because it literally blocks my vision. Well, there you go then. Another reason why peak up is so great, it actually lets you see where you're going. So we asked you, the great GCN judge and jury, what you thought and the result? 68% for peak up. Yes! Ha ah, Excellent news. 68% of you got the right answer. So a lot of thoughtful comments actually underneath as well. Many of you pointing out, quite rightly, that you shouldn't actually be too fixed on your ideas here because believe it or not, the cycling cap isn't actually just a fashion accessory. It also serves a purpose. So as Emma's already mentioned, there are times when you will need to run your peak down. But then when you want to go faster and you want to look cool, you just put the peak up. Yeah, nice to see that you're being impartial there, Sorry. Oh, as always. But why don't you let us know what you think in the comments? Peak up versus peak down, or indeed, fashion versus function. Oof, there's a topic and a half. Yeah, I might have opened a bit of a can of worms oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> it's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and British newspaper The Sun printed a great story last week, would you believe, uh, about a woman called Sophie Parry who suffered a devastating breakup, a subsequent burnout at work, and then decided to jack it all in, borrowed a bike from her mum, flew to Canada with an idea to cycle south and cover the length of the United States of America. It is an awesome story. Yeah. It took her eight weeks to cover the 2,000 miles, camping at night and carrying all her gear too. And apparently, she now lives just down the road from GCN as well. There we go then. Uh, back to the United States for a moment. Another really cool story actually. Free Bikes for Kids Madison, based in Madison, Wisconsin, are poised to give away 1,000 bikes to people who wouldn't normally have access to them. That's right. Old bikes were donated in early January, then they were refurbished, cleaned, safety checked, and they're ready to go on the 23rd of March. 
The charity has been running for 10 years, it's only their second year in Madison, and in total they've given away 32,000 bikes. What an awesome charity. Uh, right, some pro racing news now. The legend that is Tom Bonin, as well as racing cars in his retirement, has also apparently taken up a role back with a pro cycling team. Presumably with Patrick Lefebvre and Quick Step Laws? Well, no. No, he's not, actually. He's with Lotto Soudal as their technical advisor. Wow, that's like retiring from Manchester United going to coach at Manchester City. Pretty much, yeah. And unsurprisingly, perhaps, Bonin's long-time boss, Patrick Lefebvre, isn't too happy. He was actually quoted as saying that if you only ride your bike three times in a year, you can't really give much technical advice. Uh, presumably commenting there on Bonin's lack of bike riding, but also simultaneously bringing into question his own role as the boss of Quick Step Floors. So a bit of an own goal there, perhaps, mm. from Patrick. Yeah, things haven't gone so well for Lotto, though, at the start of the season in that they failed to make the final split at Omloop Het Newsblatt. Yeah, we should probably blame Tom Bonin for that. We also thought we would draw your attention to an event that we've just heard about as well called the Tour Eiteroa. It's a 3,000 kilometre self-supported bikepacking trip that takes participants from the northernmost to the southernmost tips of New Zealand. Wow. And first across the line was actually someone who is local to GCN. He's called Will the Beast. Really? That is a great name. No. Chat. It would be an awesome name, but it's just his Instagram name. Oh. Anyway, Will King. Real name? Because that's quite cool as well. <laughs> yep, that actually is his real name. Oh, well done. And well. he finished in 13 days, which I think is pretty impressive given that it's 80% off road. Yeah, that is good going, actually. And the event looks absolutely fantastic. I've got to stress, actually, it's not a race, it is just a ride, but Will the Beast was the first person to do it. So, yes. Yeah, hats off to Will. The Beast. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right, this week sees the global premieres of a new cycling film out called Mammal, standing, of course, for middle-aged man in Lycra. These guys take it deadly seriously. We're coming here to try and get a result. Bloody Garmin's flat. Vern thinks he can do anything and everything. Here we go! In a way, it's sort of like my form of worship. Bikers up. 60k, not bad for a bunch of old blokes. There's really no feeling like it. It's all about, you know, friends and family and mates, having coffee on the weekends, you go, yeah, looking after each other. One, two, three, go! They are the middle-aged men in Lycra, and they're coming to a theatre near you. And I actually went to see the UK one uh, last night, Emma, kind of for research purposes, really, just to, you know, help ease that transition for when I, when I reach Lloydie's age, basically. Yes, I mean, it's uh, worth looking out for, I suppose. Yeah, anyway, amongst the many benefits to being an older cyclist, according to the New Scientist, research published by Chris Rissell at the University of Sydney shows a significant correlation between cycling and being short on one's feet, which helps reduce the risk of debilitating falls. That's kind of cool, isn't it? I do wonder, though, whether it's actually not cycling that is the cause here. It's actually walking around in really slippery cycling shoes. That's a good point. Yeah, because well, that maybe. gives you a lot of practice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fell off the step. That's right, do it again. <laughs> it's quite high. Just bear with me. Right. Finally then, back to the Vaseline. <clears throat> Other petroleum jellies are available. They are. Now, with the recent cold snap afflicting much of Europe, we thought this may well be of interest to you. Could you actually stay warmer when cycling by rubbing Vaseline all over your face? Now, it sounds unlikely, not to mention disgusting, but Emollients like Vaseline, fat, lard, grease have long been used by open water swimmers to keep their bodies warm while they're in the water. Lovely. And apparently it works by reducing transepidermal water loss. Oh, nice. It's like a posh way of saying sweating, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, in an article, though, published in 2006 in Medscape... Which is one of my favourite journals. Yeah, I thought it might be, actually. Uh, entitled The Prevention of Cold Injuries During Exercise, actually found that spreading emollient on your body may not prevent frostbite, and in some cases may actually make the risk of frostbite worse because it gives you the perception that your skin is actually warmer. So I guess if it helps you to feel warmer, it might help, even if it's only perception. But if there's any risk of frostbite, don't do it. No, because then it would just make you cold and greasy. A bit like pizza in the morning. Yeah, it's just covered in grit. Mm. If you're in the market for a new saddle, then one of the questions that you might get asked is how wide your bum is. Which is probably not something that many of us know off the top of our heads. And actually most of us are probably slightly afraid that the answer 
is bigger than we thought. Yeah, I don't want to know. No, I don't think I do either. But now though, a new method has been proposed of how we can actually measure our sit bones or external ischial tuberosity. Nice. Yeah, that's true. A study published in the International Journal of Industrial Ergonomics... Oh, I love that one. Yeah, I thought you might. Yeah. Uh, ...has shown that instead of getting cyclists to sit on a squishy pad, there's a striking correlation between hip width and sit bone width, thus avoiding that silly pad exercise. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. One, perhaps, for saddle manufacturers to take into account. And we'd all know very quickly how wide our asses are. Mm, if uh, you want to know. Yeah, exactly. Interestingly though, I went to visit the brand Fabric the other week, a video coming soon, uh, and they said actually that when you have a wider saddle, you obviously have greater contact area, which means improved pressure distribution and therefore more comfort. And they kind of pointed out that cyclists shouldn't really shy away from wide saddles, um, and actually having a big bum doesn't matter. Yeah, good point. I mean, yeah, as long as it's not too wide, obviously. But and you wouldn't <laughs> what, want to... your bum? Yeah, no, aerodynamic drag. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, you wouldn't want to put a wide saddle on this bike, though. It's a super narrow aero prototype Cannondale bike, as debuted by Team EF Education First Drapak, and Lloydie got a sneaky preview of it on the Tech Channel. We asked you lot what you thought about it over on Instagram, and 84% of you said hot, which I guess is a pretty big thumbs up for Cannondale. Splendid. <laughs> For more details of this week's racing, you can check out the race news show. But let's just talk quickly about Omloop. It was a Danish double with a surprise win by Christina Sigard, who took out a reduced bunch for the biggest win of her career. And in the men's race, Michael Valgren soloed to victory after attacking an elite group with just 2.5k to go. Yeah, and it was a win made all the more impressive, I think, by the fact that his team, Astana, is apparently currently suffering financial woes. So the team principal, Alexander Vinokurov, actually went on Kazakh radio to complain that they haven't received the money from their government sponsors yet. And so currently the team is only operating on pre-existing funds and actually the riders haven't been paid yet. Oops. Yeah, so good job the prize money's going to come in. Hmm. Anyway, let's take a moment to look ahead to the big monuments and some week-long stage races and try and work out what we can predict for the favourites based on their performance so far this season. I mean, yeah. G Fan A, he was in the front group at Omloop, but he didn't look as strong as last year. No, he didn't, did he? And actually, he, in comparison to Sepp Van Mark, he looked much, much worse. Van Mark obviously dropped Van Avermaet on the Muir van Herardsbergen. In fact, Van Mark dropped everyone, in fact, and was only thwarted by the strong headwind on the run into the finish. And nevertheless, he still had enough in the tank to then attack the bunch and salvage third place as well. So surely a monument is not far away for that man. Or is G Fan A fully focused on Flanders and therefore playing a canny game? Well, yeah, a little bit like Peter Sagan, actually. He is currently altitude training on a mountain somewhere in Spain. He hasn't raced since the 21st of January. And I guess he's looking to change up his pre classics training. Because obviously last year he didn't, unfortunately, win a monument. And so I don't blame him. It's just a bit of a shame because well, I quite like seeing Peter Sagan race. But uh, anyway, he'll be back in action this weekend at Strada Bianca. And Strada Bianchi also sees the start of the Women's World Tour for the year. Yeah. Yep, and uh, we've seen some good action from some of the leading contenders over the last few weeks, although some of the biggest names in cycling, they will actually debut their season there, so we don't know what shape they're in, such as Lizzie Dignan and Megan Garnier. Last year's winner of Strada Bianca, though, Eliza Longo Borghini, she was in action at Omloop Head Newsblad. She finished 11th, which bodes well. Uh, and Canyon SRAM rider Hannah Barnes, she has also had a very strong start to the season with two stages in the overall at the Setmana Ciclista Valenciana. So she too is looking very strong. But we've also got to stress, actually, that all the races that have been so far are very different to Strada Bianca. So actually, I don't think we really know what is going to happen which makes it a particularly exciting season opener, I think. Yeah, it'll be great. Try and watch it. It's time now for Hack Forward Slash Bodge of the Week. Emma, get us started. So David Hogg has produced this rather slick looking upgrade to his rusty old chain bike lock by the looks of it, nice. by covering it with a mountain bike inner tube and some little black cable ties to hold it on. Do you know what? I think it looks quite neat. That does actually. I think that's a hack. You know what? Yeah. I didn't think you could upgrade a lock. But there we go, I think he's hacked it. Nice work, David. Good work. Uh, next one, this is cool, Rick Vandergate. Your five-year-old wants to join you on Zwift, but her bike has 20-inch wheels. Block of wood on your trainer. I think that's so sweet. That is very cool, so isn't cute. it? Yeah, I like that. That's definitely a hack Definitely there. a hack. Yeah. 
So here we've got Miguel Angel Gervasio Luna. Show off. <laughs> it's the only language really I can do, so I might as well. Uh, speak Apart it. from uh, German and also English. But I speak English too fast for anyone to understand me, apparently. <laughs> uh, anyway, he's found what he thinks looks like a comfy saddle, but do you know what? I think it just looks. It's just a mess. Yeah, it's hard to see exactly what's going on there, but they've definitely got the wide thing going on, which as we've just talked about, is yep. a particularly good way of spreading the pressure. And it looks like he's got a camping mat held down by some brown sticky tape. There are nicer ways of doing it on there. Should we say yep. that's a bodge? That's definitely a bodge. A d definite bodge. Okay, uh, Aaron Reed, uh, I'm too skint to buy a fancy sat-nav star head unit, and I didn't think to print out a map, so I wrote the directions on my leg. Uh, well, fair enough. I mean, you've got to hope that it's not too sunny. I mean, I'm guessing that's somewhere in the UK, so uh, so no chance of that. But imagine if you got your direction suntanned into your leg. You've got to yeah. watch out for that, Aaron. I think it's actually quite a good idea. I've done it with a bit of paper normally, or on my back of my hand. Um, really? Yeah, I have, yeah. Just written village names that I wanted. This is before, you know, cycle computers with navigation existed. Yeah, well, there we go. It's quite effective. Although, if it were cold, you'd have to put a knee warmer on, and that would totally ruin it. Yeah. Is that a hack then, Emma? Is that what you're saying? I think it's a very low-tech hack. <laughs> low-tech hack. All right, fair enough. The worst kind of hack there is, but it's enough of a hack to be a hack. It's clever. This one, though, this is a genuine hack. Now, I've never seen this one before. You have seen something like this before. Damien Dev sent it in. Flat DI2 and stuck in the wrong gear. No probs. Steal a cable from your mate to get in the right gear for the 80k ride home. Basically, jump-starting your DI2. That is cool. Yeah, that's Look good. at that. I think that's really clever. Yeah, so you get it in the right gear so you can at least get home. Nice work. It is a good way to never forget to recharge your gears again because once <laughs> you've had to pedal home in the wrong gear, you yeah. remember it. Yeah, that's a bodge. Anyway, please keep them coming in. We absolutely love going through hacks and bodges. We've got the GCN hashtag, GCN hack, so send them in on social media. Now to Caption of the Week where we give you a photo and you try and give us a funny caption. This is last week's photo, and the winner is... Well, the winner, the winner of a GCN camera water bottle, and it gives me great pleasure, Emma, because last week we gave an honourable mention to Michael McDermott, because his caption was funny but too rude. This week, it's absolutely brilliant, and we can read it out. So, are we ready for this? Ah, oh, Jesus wept. It's actually Jesus. Jesus wept. It doesn't... Yeah, right, I know. Yeah. Anyway, sense. Michael, congratulations, GCN camera water bottle, Get in touch and we will send it out to you. And for this week's caption competition, check out this photo. Ooh -ho. This is Tom Dumoulin at the Tour of Abu Dhabi. Uh, send us your ideas. All right, I'm gonna, gonna get them started, Emma. Right. Yeah, brace yourself. Tom, uh, GCN didn't test uh, wheelie bags, but I'm pretty sure they're not aerodynamic, mate. Did good. you laugh? I did. But a little bit. I, I do quite like aerodynamics. I'm not, not sure everyone's a <laughs> fan, but... Ah, <laughs> oh, damned with faint praise there. Yeah, I like aerodynamics, but no one else does. Anyway, there we go. A good start, if nothing else. Uh, you can all beat it, I'm sure. Get involved in the comment section down below. I thought it was funny. It, it is. It's very funny. Thanks, very Alex. funny. Cheers, well thanks. done. Take that. <laughs> Before we get on to what is coming up on the channel over the next week, we thought, as always, we'd give a little bit of a shout out to some of the amazing comments that you've been leaving under last week's videos. Emma, what have you found for us? Well, under the uh, most influential cycling teams, I found this comment that I really liked, which was from Andres Omania, which is, Cervelo test team must have been included in this list. Good point, well made. There was a very good reason why Cervelo test team was not included in that list, Emma. It's because we hear all about it all the time. Yeah, sorry about that. But you know, those those stories are great. Uh, anyway, under uh, how to rebuild your confidence, Buster Brown makes a very good point. Is it safe to view this video? I've not crashed in years. Touch wood or knock on wood to scare the GCN curse away, maybe? Well, it's true. We saw obviously poor Tom de Moulin was cursed after Lloydy looked at his bike. It then went wrong the very next day. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully you've all escaped and actually learned something positive from that video as opposed to uh, ending up on the tarmac. Anyway, there we go. Slightly macabre thought. Let's get on to yep. what is coming up on the channel yep. this week. Coming up this week, on Wednesday, we've got How to Find Your Cycling Speciality. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yep. And on Friday, it's a POC factory tour with Sai. 
Yeah, I went over to Stockholm. It was amazing. Uh, on Sunday, we've got that video actually that we talked to earlier about fabric. So uh, we went to visit fabric to find out how they design saddles. Particularly interesting one, that one. Uh, then on Monday is of course the GCN Racing News Show. And then on Tuesday, it is the GCN Show. From the Abadari Tour. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the GCN, GCN Show. It's nearly the end of the show, so it is time for Extreme Corner. That's right. This week we have footage from the Red Bull Farm Jam. A bunch of gnarly dudes on BMXs. Wow, that is pretty nuts. They can really ride bikes, can't they? Yeah, I am scared just watching it. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Unfortunately, that is actually the end of the GCN show for this week. Uh, please don't forget to check out the GCN shop. We've got a load of really cool clothes on there and we talked earlier on about the legendary cycling caps. We have, of course, the GCN fan kit hats and the GCN ASOS hat as well. So go check those out. Yeah. And please feel free to give the video a thumbs up and you could check out our earlier video on the most influential cycling teams down there. Not including Cervelo Testi. Which is sad, but feel free to leave your comments about that. 